I'm Aaron Bergenthal, as you know. I think all of you guys know me uh, from robotics um, or something like that. Chloe, we've been friends for a while, but the only other one. Um, so what is a gateway to me? To me, a gateway is what shows my responsibility to not only me, me and my teachers, or my, aunt, but also to my parents and to my peers, and to also show them what I've accomplished for things that sometimes I'm not as confident in sharing with them or that I don't feel like I want to share with them. Um, so my high school career. High school to me is just like a fencing tournament. As I go through the steps of high school, they remind me a lot of the steps of a fencing tournament. Um, and sometimes I don't do well in those tournaments and then I come back and I do great afterwards. And sometimes I do really well and I continue pushing strong. Um, so for a little bit of context, the stages of a fencing tournament. The first thing that you do in a fencing tournament is you check in. You tell the people that, hey, hello, I'm here. Um, and then you check your cords and you kind of get ready for the fencing tournament as well as warming up. The next thing that you do is a pool bout where you fence people of all different skill levels. Um, and then you have a break after that. The, after the break, you go into a direct elimination period of the fencing tournament which means right when you lose a bout, you're done for the day, that, that's it. After direct eliminations, you have your final bout, which are like the two people who made it to the very end, um, and then your medal ceremony where you reflect back on yourself. So the first um, part of my, the first part of a fencing tournament for, that the school relates to is my Metro Habits. This is my pool bout. Um, so the first pool bout I go right into is being an effective communicator. The times I was an effective communicator was during, was for email. I emailed teachers all the time uh, whenever I had an issue, even if sometimes I had to be forced to email them and didn't want to, <laughs> um, as well as outside of school um, and communicating with people who aren't just uh, part of the school and for activities that aren't there. I use Slack a lot because it's a very professional um, program and I use that in robotics as well as we had a group project in entrepreneurship <coughs> where texting was a very highly influential part of that where you had to communicate with each other like all times um, so and we could also call each other if we wanted to through that um, next is inquiring learner this is when i had something at my that i wanted to learn more about or wanted to have more learn more information about and i came forward to a teacher at school and i inquired about it uh, for me, this was a grant proposal that I wrote. Um, I, I'm part, I created the Upper Arlington High School Fencing Club, and I got an opportunity to raise up to $1,500 from the Columbus, Ohio Division um, of Fencing, and I had to write a grant proposal. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, um, but the main thing about this is once I got that opportunity, I went to my entrepreneurship teacher, and I said, this is a grant proposal. This is the grant proposal I was uh, assigned. How do I accomplish these goals? What should I do for, um, for it? And after I write that, what do I do? Do I talk to the people or what, what are the steps of a grant proposal? Um, my engaged learning. This is something that definitely throughout the years I have gained, um, I have done more and more. Um, I definitely started off freshman year, first semester. I was not as engaged. I was about as engaged as I was in middle school. I would take like three pages of notes a month. Um, <laughs> and, and then once I hit calculus, so my most recent like challenging course, not only did I complete one whole notebook um, of notes, but I completed a second one too at the end of the semester. So I really accomplished that note taking skill of mine and I felt very happy about that. Um, and I felt very engaged in doing that. Um, next is critical thinker. Um, the class to me that stood out the most as critical thinking is my mechatronics class. Um, I achieved a, a 96.72 in the course in the end, or a 97. Um, and this class had a lot of assignments where you had to think outside the box. Um, we did everything from 3D print a speaker that had no, elect no electronics in it. Um, so it was passive. We had to build a delivery robot we had to program a video game, which I achieved well over 100% on. It was closer to like, it was 109 out of 90 points. 
Um, so it was like closer to 120% on that assignment. And then we get, uh, combined all of those things together in the end of the year, and we created a sumo robot where we, uh, where our team plays second, and compared to the other robots, there were two like really good robots. I'll show you an image of it in the next slide. Um, our team was, we did really good on that. Um, collaboration. So this is first off, this is an image of our sumo robot. Um, even though it looks very non-cleanly, it was a very effective robot. Um, you can't judge a book by its cover. Um, so collaboration. Um, not only was it creating this, I did this, I built that robot with one other person <coughs> when other teams had three people that they got to work with. Um, I also had my entrepreneurship project where I um, had to create a, a business. It was a food biz restaurant and I had to work with uh, four people and I was this, in charge of them. I was the CEO of the company and I had to link all of their uh, things that they were great at and all the things that they weren't as good at and find something who could fill that slot and then I had to have them work together and sometimes people didn't get their work done and I had to get them to do that and there were a lot of times where I had to push myself to do work that I didn't want to do as well. The third and final thing for collaboration was our, food, our um, design challenge project from last year. Uh, I had to work with four people and we did not work well together at all. Mm -hmm. It was probably the last day where we decided to actually get, like we, or we got our whole project done. <laughs> uh, it was not effective collaboration, but it was definitely something that I fixed as I went through in my, um, my business project led me, was like the second time of that and I was able to do that much more effectively than the, um, than the food uh, challenge. Next one is the active and responsible decision making. Before um, I had my issue with the teachers, it was this active and responsible decision making has what been what helped me take OSU courses this year. And I think that's true up until three days ago where my teacher was not able to attend my gateway um, because I made a bad decision and didn't tell them exactly which what time it was. Um, this is something that I definitely will be hoping to fix. As, as time comes. But one of the things that I just, a plus that happened today is I got my letter back from the National Honor Society where I was accepted. And um, so that actually, I had a lot of active responsible decision making that led me to completing that on time. I finished the essay, it's been like, I think a month of it being assigned. And then I had about a month after that where I could just refine it and I had time to work on, worry about that. Um, so that was good active responsible decision making. That did get me into National Honor Society, so if I apply that better, um, as I continue through my career, uh, I think that I will be effective. Um, so now are my service hours. <coughs> this is my break of my fencing tournament. So my pool bouts have finished. I did great in four, five out of the six of them. And now I have to take a break, relax, and I have to look back on um, what I've done at school. And this is like my service hours, because after I finish my day at school, I want to do something that can help the community, but I still want to link that to what I have done in the rest of my, or I still have to link that to what I've done in school and my extracurriculars. The first thing that I did was I attended the Indian Village Camp as a counselor in training. This meant that they were, I have worked with about eight to nine year olds in the camp and they were running around in the woods. They had no boundaries. I had to like keep them uh, contained, um, which is a lot of work f for just one counselor to do. And I, so I was like the counselor under the counselor that would kind of help them. And my job was also to engage the kids. So if the kids were like, wandering around or bored, I had to get the, I'm flipping over rocks, looking at animals under there and insects over, under there. And this related a lot uh, to what I love to do. And I really, I went to a summer camp similar to this for many years and I loved doing that. So I wanted to, to bring that back and I wanted to show that to other kids who were younger than I was when I started to do it, um, similar to that. The next part of service hours that I did is robotics. Robotics has many opportunities for service hours. Um, 
And one of the most impactful ones for me is I attend the first LEGO League competition, which our team runs. I've done that for the last two years. Um, last year, I was running a practice table where students got to, uh, where students' robots, they got to test and see if they were working well. And then this year, I started off by doing the practice table, and then some people saw some of the videos. I ended up putting on a teapot costume and dancing with the kids and having fun with them while they were waiting for their next match to be played. Um, next is my academic success. This is my direct elimination part of my fencing tournament. If I don't do well in a class at Metro, it's not that bad, but it still will affect me as I move on in my coursework because I, I will be put back a year for that class and I may even have to retake it uh, <coughs> or take a class next uh, a semester later than I would have been able to before. So um, for a freshman year, something that I really enjoy about my grades is they always went up. The lower, besides second semester, so for first semester, Mechatronics got a 96 or a 97, I rounded down for this slide. Uh, Arts, I got a 96. Uh, chemistry, I got a 93. And English, I got a 92. Um, so that showed, I was working there, but these are very easy classes. I had Mechatronics <laughs> and I had Arts. <laughs> <laughs> Can I delete that from the video right here? <laughs> Not so much. Sorry, but um, I had two electives that year, so it was, it was. I didn't have to focus my attention on four different classes and memorizing stuff from four different classes. I just had. I had two classes that were very challenging um, for me. Um, but so then came J term where I had government, which was a full time class. This class. I was doing, I did very well in the midterms and tests, and then I kind of postponed the final project for a little bit, which didn't end up very well for me, but I was able to fix it um, fast, because uh, I knew what my mistakes were, and I achieved a 95 in the class overall. Um, next is my second semester. Um, English 10, I was very proud to have gone up in that grade, because I, I used to struggle a lot in English, so just bringing it up 1% for me was a big improvement. Um, as warm studying special metro skills, I struggled with that teacher. I didn't enjoy how he taught. Um, so for me to work with somebody else and to learn how to listen to somebody when I need to listen to them instead of arguing um, was something that I had to do. So that I, even though it was a 91, which is one of the lowest grades that I've gotten throughout my uh, time at Metro, it was still a good, class, a good learning experience for me. Next is biology. This is this was probably my favorite class of that year because I love the teacher and I love to take I love learning about biology. Um, and then pre calc was my math class. That was my first math class in about a year because I hadn't taken a class until eighth grade, last semester of eighth grade. So that was exciting for me to take, but I had to get my mind back into it and back into learning. <coughs> um, now onto my sophomore year, calculus was my first class. This that I had that was not a mastery class. It was even though it was an eighty-eight percent. This was the best learning experience I think I've had at the school because I had to learn how to study first off. I couldn't just fail a test and look at it later and then remediate the test. I had to study for that class, and I was there I, every single day. I was spending at least like an hour and a half working on some sort of homework or studying for that class. Uh, next is American History, where I, I really enjoyed that class also this 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 last semester because the teacher was nice and it was my first like history class that I enjoyed in a while. Um, entrepreneurship was very challenging. I had to communicate with people a lot, and I had to collaborate with them, which was with even with people <coughs> who I didn't enjoy. But I was able to test the skills that I learned in Design Challenge, and that helped me do so well. Um, finally, English 11, which again, I, I brought my grade up from the last year. Um, now I brought it up 2%, and I was very happy with that. So now it's a 95%, uh, which, which to me is, again, very exciting for me. I had to remediate very few assignments in that class. The first assignment in that class was an essay where I stupidly did not put any sources down, and I lost. I went from a 100% down to an 88%, which was, 
which I was able to fix in literally 10 seconds of my time. It took me to put all the sources down. So I would have, if I had not been as lazy or effective, I definitely sh would have gotten a be much better grade on that assignment. But then the next essay in the class was a satire essay, and I learned, I used what I learned the last essay, and I brought that grade up to 100% on that es on the essay. I passed it with flying colors, and the teacher is using it for an exemplar essay in the next years. You know, uh, coming with 12, I have an expectation of you getting a 96% then. <laughs> That's fine. That's my expectation. <laughs> Um, now, second semester, so this coming semester, my prediction. I already know I'm an OSU Calculus and OSU German. Those are brand new courses for me, like a brand new experience of a course for me. And I'm already um, having a lot of fun in my German class and in my Calculus class. Um, and then English, hope I'm hoping to get. I'm not sure if I will, um, but I really hope I do get English 12. Um, so now that my direct eliminations are over, this is kind of looking back on my direct elimination bouts. Um, I have to think about my chords that I have, because my core, if I break a chord during a bout, it delays the bout, and it's kind of like, if you break a chord all the time, somebody looks at you like, you're not as smart of a person. Like, it's kind of how like, they view you sometimes. <laughs> so for my personal reflection, my extracurricular activities, um, the first robotics competition um, is something that I'm very passionate about and that's definitely going to help me in my time uh, throughout my high school career and then is influencing my um, what I want to do in college because I love engineering. Um, so this year, I this is my second year on the team. Uh, this year I became a mechanical assembly manager <coughs> and I create a part of the rope of a mechanism that actually is put on the robot. So this year I am building a climber that will extend up, grab onto a bar, and then pull the whole robot up. So I'm leading a team of freshmen and rookies um, on doing that. Um, so that, that's one of the big things that I've done with the team. Um, last year, our team won two regionals and engineering inspiration, the engineering inspiration award. This award basically talked about um, inspiring students to do engineering who weren't just high schoolers, like, um, middle schoolers and even kids younger than that through our library workshops and other things. Um, next is my fencing club. Um, this is my second year doing the fencing club. Um, last year we had two, fen two fencers who continuously showed up, so it was, I would consider it a failure. Uh, but it wasn't because this year we had, I uh, advertised and achieved nine fencers. I also got the opportunity, as I said before, to create a fencing club grant, um, which achieved $1,500 in new equipment for the team, and which is still in the process of me getting that equipment, but I did achieve the grant. Um, and I also overcame many challenges with the club. What partially the reason why we had so low attendance last year is because all of our equipment was stolen, and I had to work with the school um, and even like, like state attorneys to get that equipment back. Finally is my competitive fencing career. This is my sixth year fencing, um, so it's a long time <laughs> for me to be doing that, I think. Uh, I am a C-rated fencer nationally, A being the best and then U being the worst. Um, this means basically that I'm so good that some events they don't let me, they don't let me participate in. Um, I've been the regional <coughs> champion for about, for every year I've fenced. Uh, and it's been either first or second place, and it's been second place to a new person every year, so I've overcame that person from the, that, the time that I was second place the next time. And uh, this last year I was first place in the region, which is about 13 states. It's not just Columbus, Ohio, it is the whole Columbus, Michigan, um, Chicago, that whole stretch. Um, and this year, I qualified for the Junior Olympics for fencing, um, which was very exciting for me. Last year, I did qualify for it, but I didn't attend, and this year I will be attending it. Um, I have also will be participating in the Arnold Fencing Classic and a few other North American Cups. Uh, my biggest accomplishments. Academically, achieving an 88 <coughs> in calculus was my biggest accomplishment. Even though it's only an 88%, it really showed that 
I was capable of studying for exams and studying for tests and not just th putting my work off like I had been before. Um, and I actually had a lot of fun. And it, it showed me that, how, that some math classes can be fun if they're challenging. <laughs> if they're challenging. Um, now my non-academic accomplishment I think is interesting because for, it's, it's very academic. So it's achieving my fencing club grant. This grant I've talked about before, but it introduced, it, I had an introduction to it, um, an overview, uh, a needs analysis, and a conclusion. So I had to talk about every single aspect of that, of my club in there, and I had to talk about everything that we had, and what we needed, why, and why we needed it, which was a, a very professional thing for me to do. And with, and I did, I also did have the. I did feel like I needed help on that, so I did also ask my peers and ask my family uh, for help on that too. Um, now, this now, even though I have not reached the final bout of my fencing tournament, I'm going to look at the medal ceremony and what I'm prepared to do next after this fencing competition of high school finishes. Um, so, overview of my time at Metro, I was a middle school student. And the big thing that I take, took away from middle school is I, I didn't care what I was doing. I would finish an assignment, turn it in, or not turn it in, which was a common trend. Um, and I would, I, I just didn't care. I would, I'd just do the work, turn it in. If I got a, a 70, I'd fix it to get it to an A. I never studied, I just existed. Um, but middle school is when I uh, learned about engineering and felt very inspired about engineering. As an underclassman, this is where I really, where really hit me that I have to work. I can't just sit there, listen during a lecture, and then write my essay. I have to actually think about that teacher, and I have to write and take notes in that class, and then I have to apply those notes to my essay in order to continue. Um, also, as an underclassman, I explored all the cool things that you can do with engineering. So, middle school, I learned that engineering existed and that engineering was cool. But this year, or, and as in, or like these years of being an underclassman, I have learned how cool things that you can do, and I've actually done those cool things, such as build a robot. Um, and continuing on with high school, um, my hope is to continue doing well academically and not settling for eh. Um, I also, when in my later career, I, I hope to um, do some sort of engineering, I guess. Uh, so why do I want to go to OSU like, to take classes? Um, it's to further my interest in preparing for when I go to actual colleges. I want to uh, be able to see those classes and feel like I'm there and be ready and prepared for when I go off on my, my own. So instead of me calling my parents when I'm at some great university, like, oh no, what's one plus one? Or something that could be very, that will be very simple for me now. <coughs> it will really prepare me. Also, OSU will help me figure out what I'm good at. Hopefully, I'll be able to take courses that are engineering and that I get to learn about um, more types of engineering that go further in depth than what I've learned before. Also, OSU will help me figure out what type of engineering I want, I want to specialize in. If it is even still engineering, it could change from in two years. Um, and then I want to set myself apart from other students because students at other high schools have the IB and AP programs, which Metro sadly does not have. So I want to set myself apart and say, well, I, my school didn't have AP classes, but I have gone on and taken courses at The Ohio State University. <laughs> And, um, and done well in them. I also just want to have a new experience. I want to meet new people, and I want to work with new people and learn things that I won't be able to do before, which is kind of what all of those things are part of. But I think it's, in total, it is a new experience, uh, all those things together. So my goal, uh, in my college career, I want to um, excel in my classes and ne never settle for the average. I always want to get that A in that class. Even if the average grade, if, even if I come home and I say, the average grade on last year's exam was a 63%, I want to get a 75% on that, <laughs> on that exam. Um, 
And my goal after graduating is to complete a college degree in some sort of engineering right now. It could, again, it could change because I do have two years uh, to think about that. Um, but I also want to go to a school at the level of OSU or hopefully better. Um, just because if I'm already taking classes at OSU, I'd want to show a school that I'm, not, I'm able to do that and I can hopefully go to one of those Ivy League schools or like dream schools. Um, also, my personal goal for uh, high school in this year is to do well in fencing, complete, compete well in Junior Olympics, and compete well in fencing in total, hopefully get my B rating uh, in fencing, or even an A by senior year. Um, so that said, this is also my, medal, my wall of medals. This is kind of, this is not all of them. <laughs> I ran out of room on my wall. Uh, but this is where majority of them have been held. <coughs> Um, there's also a trophy from being the second place high school fencer in, the, in Ohio, and then a few other ones that are scattered around. That, any questions or comments? Hey, do you have your advocate student? Okay, would you like to? <coughs> Is it time for that? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, should I sit down or should I sit down? You should. Or you can stand. Can you just stand and listen? I'll just take your seat, Johnny. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, hello, everyone. My, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Johnny. I know most of you from robotics. I know Aaron from robotics. And so that's, I think, mostly what I'm going to talk about here to frame my arguments, I guess. So uh, I've been working with Aaron on the team for the past year and a half. And in that time, he's grown immensely. Um, he's become a valuable member of the team only as a sophomore, which is a pretty strong accomplishment on a team that big. Um, I think there's two main reasons that he's grown so much and become such an important member of the team. The first is that he's not afraid to step up and ask questions. There's a lot of time when you're a freshman on the team that it's really easy to just kind of sit back and let things happen, because uh, sometimes there's not a whole lot for freshmen to do. But that wasn't what Aaron did. He was always working on something, and when he wasn't, he was finding something to work on. Um, I, there were several practices where Aaron would come up to me multiple times asking for something to do, and I, he was persistent enough that I gave him things to do. And so through that, he's learned and he's grown, and just that persistence, I think, is something that is really valuable for college classes, and not being afraid to ask for explanations or to try and participate. Because it's also really easy in a college class to just sit back and let things happen. If you don't really understand the lecture or if there's an assignment going through that you don't know how to start, it's pretty easy to fall into the trap of just letting it happen and assuming you'll work on it later. But I don't ex expect that to really be a problem for Aaron because there's always those opportunities to like go to your professor's office hours or just ask questions. And I've never seen him hesitate to ask a question or to go talk to someone. The second reason I think he succeeded on the team is just pure determination. As one example, uh, I recently spent a full weekend working with Aaron on a robot CAD competition, and we were three days sun up to sundown, and I never once heard Aaron be anything other than enthusiastic about working on it. Uh, and the same goes for robotics. But I don't think he missed a practice during build season last year uh, when he had any other option. And that's another thing that just goes into college classes, because sometimes you just kind of have to get through it. Uh, you're not going to be inspired or uh, things won't come easy, but you just got to spend some time and power through a reading or assignment, and I don't think Aaron would give up in that kind of situation. So I've seen a lot of growth from Aaron in the past year and a half, and I think that the opportunity to take college classes will only help that growth accelerate. Thank you. For the yeah. So at this time, we ask all students to leave the room.